Welcome everybody, Joe with ECRM here, and I have with me today Dan Sadler, who is a principal with IRI, and his specialty is the confectionery industry. And uh, what he's going to be talking about today is an overview, basically a state of the industry, but as we all know, the whole industry has changed across categories due to COVID. So, so Dan, thank you for joining us. And can you give a little highlight of some of the things you'll be covering in your presentation before you get into it? Uh, thanks again, Joe. I appreciate the, uh, the time with you this, this afternoon. Um, so, yes. Yeah, so, so, you know, in, in years past, we, we've kind of really given a state of the market uh, within confections. Obviously, this year is a little bit different with COVID. So we're still going to touch on kind of the state of the industry, kind of state of work infection that is today. But we're also going to have a, a bit of a focus on COVID and where things have progressed and some of the challenges we've seen. Awesome. And, and this is going to be a little different than we typically do it. So when we're in person, uh, uh, Dan would usually present to the audience. We'd have a QA. and a so obviously, you know, this is an on-demand presentation, so I may be jumping in from time to time with some commentary or a question. So it'll be more of a presentation and a fireside chat combined. So, so Dan, uh, whenever you're ready, let's check out the slides. All right. Well, uh, thanks again, Joe. Um, so, so really just um, kind of cover off on what, what we'll talk about today. So as I said, you know, we'll, we'll go through kind of the state of the confections industry, uh, we'll, we'll kind of then turn our focus to uh, kind of some of the drivers during COVID, kind of what we've seen during COVID. Then we'll really kind of focus next on kind of the uh, what's happening at retail and then the consumers. Then we'll just kind of summarize things. And I know, Joe, you've got, I'm sure, plenty of commentary and questions throughout. So certainly uh, interrupt me as needed. Um, well, I'm, I'm definitely going to do that. And then what's cool is, uh, and I'll make a reference to this, uh, um, last month, probably about two weeks ago, maybe a little more, I posted an interview that I did with your colleague, uh, Larry Levin, which was just a broad overview of how uh, COVID has impacted the way consumers are shopping across categories. So this is kind of a nice, uh, more specific follow-up to that presentation. Okay, good, good. All right, so, so what I'm showing here is, you know, through the, you know, the latest 52 weeks through July 12, 2020, so, so pretty fresh data, we're looking here at you know total store sales, you know center store food and beverage, and we, we have confections and some of the key confection categories, and uh, you, you can see confections. You know overall, we're, we're about a twenty six billion dollar industry, up slightly, almost one percent versus year ago. Units are you know uh, a little bit soft, but what's what's really interesting again is is in years past when, when we've kind of shared this data, we've seen kind of total store and food and beverage pretty closely aligned with confections you know you know maybe it's confections might be ahead a little bit maybe maybe behind it a little bit but this year you can see with covid um you know there certainly is a lot of growth within center store and uh in total store in general and um you know we'll go through some of the reasons why confections are a little bit behind those uh those trends but still you know overall we're seeing growth within chocolate and non-chocolate um, and, you know, gum, you know, see a little bit of softness. And again, that's really COVID driven and uh, just, um, you know, convenience channel, but we'll go through some of that. And, you know, it's interesting with the gum is that um, gum is typically at the checkout. I mean, it's in line, but yeah, you know, it's, it's at the checkout. So one of the things I talked about with Larry is how shoppers are really picking their spots where they go in the store. You know, they'll go to aisle three and five and seven. And if you're in aisle six, well, they're not going to, they're going to pass right. you by. So the importance of the checkout, you know, is crucial. However, not in that category and <laughs> not in right. gum. So, yep. Uh, yep. so it'll be interesting to see, you know, some of the reasoning behind that, that you get to yep. later on. Yep. Okay. And then as we just, you know, again, still looking at the latest 52 weeks, just breaking out, um, you know, kind of that change uh, by uh, channel. And again, we could see here just over the last 52 weeks, uh, when you factor in e-commerce, so before we were looking at just total multi-outlet sales with convenience, now we're bringing in kind of that e-commerce, the delivery part of that. You can see now, now sales go from you know 0.8% now up to about 2.5%. So certainly e-com has a big impact on you know our, our, our confection industry. And when you look here, kind of we're looking at the three key channels, mass, food, and C-store. You know, combine those, um, you know, three channels represent 
over you know two thirds of uh, the sales. And you know, uh, again, C store being being flat versus year ago, uh, a lot of that's due due to COVID. But again, you know that ecom gr growth. Uh, Forty-eight percent growth, which represents almost seventy percent of the the confections growth. So, um, e-com certainly has uh, had a big impact, um, not just in the industry, but certainly overall as well. All right, and as we kind of break down that e-com um, universe a little bit more, so on the top where we're looking at total CPG e-com, where we see, you know, it, it's up forty-five percent. Uh, versus year ago, and you can see confection certainly is is ahead of um, total CPG when, when we look at ecom. So you know, non chocolates up almost sixty percent versus year ago. Chocolates up over forty percent, and gum. You know, again, we saw kind of soft sales, uh, malt out, but you know, ecom gum sales are, are are doing well. And again, all these categories are ahead of kind of total CPG trends, which is very encouraging. Do you know what? Um, is there any preference in? or difference in how they're buying uh, confections online versus in the store? Like, are they buying bigger pack sizes? Are they buying, you know, different types of units? Well, what, what we do see a lot is you do see a different share, you know, uh, brand share. So, you know, while a brand may have, you know, maybe not such, um, you know, strong share sales within, you know, non-chocolate, for example, you might see it, you know, peak up into the top 20 with, with an e-com. So you definitely see different brands having a stronger focus in e-com. Gotcha. Okay, now as we kind of um, look at chocolate a little bit more, um, you know, really I, I think kind of one of the, the key things here is, you know, as we look at some of the key segments here, I, again, the two biggest segments, you know, our chocolate bars, uh, greater than and less than uh, three and a half ounces, are doing are performing well, and I will tell you during COVID, um, especially, you know, as we've kind of moved past COVID, they're doing very, you know, still, you know, see a lot more, you know, s'mores, a lot more outdoor activities. You're seeing a lot of those, um, you know, those candy bars doing very well, and also really, you know, sugar-free chocolate up over 16% versus year ago. Um, a lot of that just has to do with, um, you know, consumers just, you know, being a little bit more healthy. You're seeing a lot more stevia on packaging so I, I think that's really resonating with consumers so you're seeing um, some really strong growth from, from sugar free then as we kind of turn focus to, to non-chocolate uh, kind of the the gold standard within non chocolate's always been chewy we've seen year over year growth with with, with uh, kind of the chewy candy that still is continuing it's up over you know five and a half percent versus year ago um, when we also look at, you know, licorice, licorice has done very well. It's up, you know, 6% versus year ago. And that was another really, I uh, had some strong COVID performance as well. Um, a, lot, a lot more larger sizes of licorice were purchased, which kind of indicates that maybe as consumers were, you know, not going to the movie theaters, now they're, you know, watching, uh, you know, shows at home, you're, you know, kind of entertaining a little bit more, uh, differently. So now you have your family, you, you know, instead of, uh, you know, you're, you know, you're, you're just buying bigger packages of licorice, for example, is kind of some of the things we saw. So, you know, um, so certainly licorice has done well, you know, during this um, time. Those those uh, Tiger King binges, uh, yeah. <laughs> especially at the beginning of it. So it's, yeah. it's it, interesting because you have, on the one hand, people are being a little healthier. But yeah. on the other hand, you want comfort, comfort yeah. foods and you want to indulge. So that yeah. you kind of feel a little bit normal. So yeah. it's a little dichotomy going on there. Yep, for sure. And then just, you know, innovation throughout 2019. Again, I, I think really kind of the message here is, you know, you're still seeing within non-chocolate a lot more, you know, sour um, continues to do very well. You're still seeing that innovation. Um, you know, you're seeing crossover to, to some cereal crossover. So, so that's also something we saw in 2019 share sizes. Now, again, we talked about this a little bit before, Joe, that sharing might be a little bit different now. Consumers yeah. might not be willing to share a pack of candy, uh, yeah. but if it's shareable and it's individually wrapped, I mean, maybe something different there, but certainly, you know, that might be a trend that might soften a little bit or we'll see something different. And then just, you know, even just, you, you see more of the novelty stuff too, doing very well. But at the end of the day, innovation did, did pretty well in 2019. And when we, you know, IRI, we do our annual pace setters report, and um, last year, the, the top two pace setters were from Confections. Uh, this year, while we didn't place any um, brands in, in, in our top 10, we did have you know, some brands with, with, within um, 
confections that uh, actually did, did, you know, placed in the top 100 within our pace setters. You can see them here. Um, so, so, you know, I, again, consumers certainly are not shying away from innovation. Um, you know, they're willing to try new products, all about the experience. So, and, and just, you know, just different, different formats. So. So now we'll kind of look at uh, just kind of the, the kind of the scale fr fr from uh, COVID. So we know that COVID kind of happened, you know, in March. Shelter-in-place orders were were, were kind of uh, implemented. Uh, it really led to unprecedented levels of sales within CPG. I mean, I, you know, I'll go through some of the you know some of the data points uh, here in a minute, but we saw just unbelievable uh, sales within CPG. Um, we also saw. With that, you know, consumers also, there were some consumers who did not really feel comfortable going to grocery stores. They stayed at home, ordered online, whether it was um, directly through retailers or other avenues. I mean, we saw a big uptick in online sales. And here, again, so we, we kind of look at the, at, at the progression, you know, for, from March forward. And, you know, in red here, we have, you know, what we call kind of the food and beverage sales. Black is total store, then we have our non-food. And you could really see, I mean, 61% growth versus year ago by week over those two weeks within center store is, is just, again, something unheard of. We've never wow. seen that before. While it has softened a little bit, kind of that curve is shrunk, it's still, we're still seeing that growth, um, you know, throughout the kind of that COVID period. It was pretty, you know, sustained growth every week uh, throughout the entire um you know, spectrum of, of the COVID. Again, we kind of looked at that data through April 26th. I think this is also going to help revive the center store a little bit, you know, because people now have realized that they can shop a little healthier in the center store. Uh, they can get, uh, you know, like I'm a good example. I started, I really never ate frozen vegetables until this all started. And then I just, you know, filled my uh, freezer with them and now I'm kind of hooked. Now, uh, now that's uh, I have them all the time, and I will continue to do so. So, uh, it certainly changed the way I shop personally. Oh yeah, yep, for sure. All right. So then, you know, kind of next, what we had, um, you know, we had kind of what we'll call our our spring celebrations, kind of our you know our Easter holidays, which is very very important with within confection. So kind of we had the COVID, we kind of moved into our Easter season. And you could see, you know, the impact on Easter was um, w w was pretty profound. I mean, I, you know, we saw here again, we, we see kind of, you know, some of that early growth during, the, the, you know, the, you know, high consumer um, spend during kind of that COVID period. And then really kind of, as you look at that Easter season, we really saw um, just not, not the, you know, kind of softer sales than what we would normally expect to see during Easter. And again, a lot of that's driven by just different ways of celebrating, um, fewer people in the stores, just, uh, you know, just not those in-person occasions. So um, Easter, we certainly did see a little bit of a softness in sales this year. And also the fact that Easter was um, one week shorter this year than it was last year certainly is going to have the impact as well. So then, you know, um, however, having said that, now you know, I think with more at-home occasions, you know, the, you know, um, going to be happening. You know, again, kind of, there's still a little bit skepticism, a little, you know, people still scared about what's going to happen next. I think we're going to see more at-home activities, and again, I think confections, as we'll see, is really poised to kind of really uh, capitalize on that and do do very well going forward. So now what I'll do is I'll just kind of look at some of the drivers during the COVID period and post period. So, um, you know, really, I, you know, here, you know, we could see really kind of the impact, you know, 2019 confection sales were up two and a half percent versus year ago. That's a calendar year. Um, during the COVID period, again, that's going to be, you know, that March through that April 26th timeframe, we saw confections down 1.4% versus that same time year ago. Um, and I, you know, driving that again, a lot of that is, you know, kind of that softness in Easter sales, um, and really also convenience. I mean, the convenience channel really, uh, had a soft, soft swing during the pandemic, just because not as many consumers were out, they weren't driving, um, less travel. So just convenience channel really, um, took a little bit of a hit. And you, you saw from my, my previous slide, convenience is uh 22% of confection sales. So, um, a soft convenience, uh, channel will certainly uh, impact sales as well. And you know, just one thing I wanted to note, because this was something that uh, I touched on with Larry, was that 
um, a mm-hmm. lot of and and actually we interviewed um, uh, Yesway as well a while ago, right after that happened, and it seemed that when people did go to convenience, they weren't going for candy. They were actually going to find things that they couldn't find in the grocery store. So they're looking for meals. They're looking for, you know, prepared foods, toilet paper, you know, and everything but uh, snacks and candy. Yeah. So, so now kind of what we're going to do, we'll we'll look at during COVID in blue and then post COVID in green. And, 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 you know, we could see within some of the major um, segments within confections, you know, chocolate sales during COVID flat versus year ago, post COVID again, that post COVID is going to be from that, you know, May 3rd through uh, um, September, uh, I'm sorry, July 26th, it's up 10%. So we're seeing certainly a turnaround within chocolate, non-chocolate, was down 4% during COVID. Now, kind of post-COVID, it's up 5%. Gum, you know, mint sales, still a little bit soft, but um, a little bit of a rebound, but still, you know, kind of that soft sales. And, and again, I, I think a lot of that still has to do with the change in the front end. Um, you just, you know, you still have to distance yourself, so you're not spending as much time in the front end. You're kind of getting up there. You're rushing to put your groceries, you know, on, on, on the uh, – on the turnstile, so you're just not um, not spending as much time on the front end. So, so I think that's an impact and um, convenience. Like I say, that's that's coming back. So hopefully, we'll we'll start seeing gum and mints um, turn around a little bit more. So you know what I think? I'm wondering also if masks have anything to do with it. You know, like people yeah. like they don't need mints because their their breath is covered by a mask, or yeah. you know, and they're, they're yeah. not going to be chewing gum. So mm-hmm. may you know, I'm wondering maybe that might have something to do with it. Yeah, could be. Yeah, because you know what? Because it's such a difference between the gum and mints, and then the candy and the chocolate and non-chocolate. Like I wouldn't expect it to be that right. much lower. So, yeah. and the only difference would be that you know, maybe that mask thing. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, it could be. Yeah, like it's, I, I mean, you're and really- the uh, front, the checkout. Like you said, a lot of times yeah. they have so much. You have the plastic at the front end. You have, you know, all the people cleaning and stuff. It just doesn't seem like a place you want to pick up something right, right. now. Yep. So then, again, just some of the changes we're seeing, you know, uh, center stores really kind of progressed. One, you know, and I'll go into these a little bit more, but uh, just more conscious of your health. Um, you know, um, special occasions. So really, you know, I know I've, I've got a daughter who just, gra- you know, graduated. I mean, I've probably different ways of celebrating graduations, but, you know, whether it's a drive-by, you know, and you're throwing a, you know, giving a card and some candy, I mean, you're definitely seeing different, different ways of, uh, um, uh, different, just different ways of celebrating a community. You really want to kind of buy local. I know I have tried to order takeout from some of the local establishments that we used to go to. Uh, and just, again, just kind of just having that pleasure during this time. Uh, traditions, you still have a lot of traditions, whether it's Mother's Day, um, birthdays, graduations, you still kind of want to uphold some of those traditions, again, in a different way, and treating still. Um, we're not seeing anybody not wanting to treat. I think even now it's even more important to treat than, than what it was before. People want to treat you know, themselves or kids uh, a little bit more than they were maybe in the past. So um, IRA has been, uh, we, we do a weekly pulse survey we've been doing since kind of the pandemic and we've kind of been looking at um, our results over time. And um, you know, one of the things we found is, you know, 35% of consumers are, are really, you know, taking care of themselves. They're really um, making sure that they're being healthy. Um, you can kind of see that um, 31% are, um, are more focused on health uh, as a result of the pandemic than they were before. And 22% have said that, you know, they're changing their eat, eating habits to be a little bit healthier as a result of the pandemic. So, um, you know, we're certainly seeing um, some healthy trends. And then, um, I, Joe, I know at, all the ECRM events we've we, we've been at the last uh, few years, you know, CBD has been a big topic, and um, you know, during you know the pandemic, we, we're seeing even a, a bigger in, increase in uh, CBD sales. Even within confession, confections is up seventy six percent during the eight week COVID period. So certainly, consumers are looking for you know um, some ways to kind of um, um, 
you know, just be a little bit, you know, I don't know, you, know, you don't normally associate COVID with, or um, CBD with, with necessarily being healthy, but certainly there are um, ways that it can kind of help relax people, just make them feel a little bit more comfortable. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, stress and, and, and uh, uh, anxiety caused by all of this is definitely something that's going to contribute to that. All right. So, uh, you know, I talked a little bit about TV viewing. TV viewing certainly is up. And again, you know, through our um, weekly surveys, 18% of consumers have chosen more comfort foods for, for meals and sides. 15% admit to not following their, their, their diet eating plan. So while we do see, you know, some healthy trends going on, we also see that there is, is some uh, indulgence as well, just, you know, kind of being comfortable. So kind of um, you know, again, when you, when you're sitting down watching, you know, the, the Tiger King or whatever, I mean, it, it's, you're, you, you're going to indulge a little bit. So, you know, we're, we're seeing some of that as well. I've seen both sides. I have some friends that have lost a lot of weight and gotten in great shape, a lot of sleep during this thing and other friends that have been day drinking most of the week and <laughs> <clears throat> they don't look as awake. <laughs> yeah. But again, you know, as we talked a little bit more about, you know, some celebrations, again, we saw that, you know, within confections, you know, Easter was a little bit soft. Again, it's, you know, um, do a little bit in part to, you know, the shorter season and the way things were, but, you know, online certainly, um, you know, was a little bit of a boost, but then you, you look something like, uh, you know, Passover, you know, you're not, you're, you're more individual households. It's not one big gathering. So we saw, you know, an increase in, uh, in matzo crackers. So, um, so kind of, a, it's opposite ends of the spectrum a little bit, but certainly, you know, the way, um, celebrating is uh, happening now, it certainly is changing some of the, uh, the patterns we're seeing and some of the trends. Mm-hmm. So, you know, again, you know, as we um, kind of looked at our, our survey, you know, over, over time here, we, we've seen that, you know, one of the questions we've asked is, um, you know, are you treating yourself more than you did in, in, in the past? And we saw, you know, in our first, you know, uh, initial uh, wave of the survey, kind of wave two, we saw that 18% said they were um, treating themselves more. Uh, now, uh, eight weeks into it, it's uh, 31%. So certainly we're seeing more treating happening um, as this kind of pan- pandemic has progressed, which I-, I thought was very interesting. Good sign too. I mean, I, I think we need to kind of take a step back and you know make everyone feel good. And I think this is a good picture too. Yeah. All right. Any any questions, Joe? I know we're kind of going through things fast here. No, no. I, uh, I've been just asking them along the way, so I figured. <laughs> so keep rolling. All right. All right. So now, kind of just some of the uh, retail trends. So um, one, you know, thing we're certainly seeing is as you know, we, we've seen unemployment swell. It was seventeen, sixteen, seventeen percent. Now I think it's I, I think I saw stats down to ten percent, but certainly you know consumers were more conscious of how they were spending their money, so they were certainly um, um, switching channels. You know they were certainly looking at other channels for the for the best deal. So we saw some you know um, dollar uh, channel has has done very well. So we're seeing some channel switching going on. Um, again, we, we talked about online a little bit, but certainly we're seeing more online um, activity. Um, one other thing, as far as online, you know, uh, search, um, online searches need to catch up with consumer demand. So a lot of times consumers will, you know, um, search for keto, but not all products make keto claims. So they might be keto friendly. They're good for keto, but they don't make a claim and you don't even come up in the search. So, um, that, that certainly is, is a challenge. Um, you know, assortment, certainly we're seeing larger pack sizes. So, you know, there's some, some different things going on there. Uh, we're also seeing, again, with um, consumers watching their dollars a little bit more, we're seeing, a, you know, some growth in uh, private brands. And then, you know, some retailers are looking for alternative sources to, to get products. So I, I read an article the other day that, you know, Hershey was, you know, with S'mores, S'more Day this week. Um, they were kind of working with a third party to make sure that, you know, their product along with, you know, graham crackers and, and marshmallows were all kind of arriving at the stores, um, you know, cohesively at, at the same time. So again, they were just trying to, you know, just make sure everything was in stock. So um, some interesting, in, interesting times. You know what? And to that point, um, I think a lot of consumers, you know, this has been a little bit of an opportunity for emerging brands 
uh, especially early on in the pandemic when things were going out of stock and like someone's favorite brand wouldn't be there, they would get the next, you know, uh, uh, an emerging brand or something similar and it's kind of forcing trial and then they like those new products, you know, so now you have this battle between the incumbents who now have to win back those customers or those, you know, the new ones who were trying to keep those customers that switched only because there was nothing else available. Right. Yeah. And I, I read today also, you know, um, you know, um, fudge stripes with, with s'mores, you know, kind of an alternative to, to graham crackers. I mean, that's another, um, you know, a way where kind of consumers that, you know, are switching, um, you know, how, how they're, how they're enjoying those, those treats. So. All right, so um, th this I, I know there's there's a lot of lines here, but um, you can see re really you know this is just breaking it down by channel over the COVID time period. You know we, we've got you know total multi ala which which is in in, in green here, um, but really I, I you know I, I think the key thing I wanted to really show here is again kind of yellow there is the convenience trend, and that's kind of where we saw that really that convenience channel really. Um, you know, we, we could see that, you know, double digit declines, you know, week over week, which, which were certainly, um, um, definitely, um, you know, soft and, and, and kind of hurt some of, you know, the gum sales and, and just overall. But again, we'll see that, you know, convenience has certainly made a comeback in the last few weeks. We're seeing, you know, as consumers are getting out more, you know, we're seeing convenience sales change. And also, you know, we can't, you know, ignore, you know, the food channel has done very well kind of in orange here. The food channel is really, um, been uh, been kind of a winner during the the COVID time period, not just with in, in confections, but overall as well. So as we kind of break down the COVID time period by channel, kind of a similar you know chart we saw um, you know previously when we were looking at fifty two weeks. So again, we saw the candy sales during COVID were down one point four percent. You know, and again we just break it out by channel here. Um, you know, one of the some of the key things we want to want to look at here is uh, again food is up almost eight percent versus uh, you know the year ago time frame. Ecom is up eighty five percent. Look at the share change; almost three share points they've uh, um, gone up. You know during the COVID time time frame, and really C stores lost kind of kind of four share points. So uh, just really kind of breaks things uh, everything down again by channel. I won't go through every 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 one of these data points, but. Um, and I know we'll have a lead behind for everyone too, Joe, but um, certainly, you know, some um, very interesting way to look at everything and just to kind of see what, what, what trends we're seeing during COVID. So now, um, as we've kind of lifted those restrictions, so as we look now, May, post-COVID, so May 3rd through uh, current, July 26th, so pretty fresh data, you know, we're seeing candy uh, with a rebound up 6% versus year ago. Um, so certainly we're seeing a rebound in sales, still a lot of, um, you know, positive momentum from econ, uh, up 80%. Um, food is actually up now 12%, where it's up a little over 7% before now it's up at the C store, still down a little bit. And, and I think the other thing too, to, to note w w within uh, C store, again, summer is a big convenience, you know, a lot of, you know, you're, you see, you know, share during post COVID at 26%, which is down from 28.5% versus the same time period a year ago. So C store during those summer months, I mean, it really drives confe confection sales. So very important. And um, and again, some of the trends we're seeing in C stores, we're starting to see more of a positive impact, um, you know, uh, through June and, and forward. So um, we're seeing, hoping to see that turn around even a little bit more. Gotcha. So a little bit more of a, a look at e-com. So again, total e-commerce, uh, again, this is consider um, includes all ecom, click and collect everything. We're seeing, you know, kind of during COVID, it was up 104 um, percent. Now it's up 93 percent. And what's the difference between this chart and the last one, Joe? I know the last one we showed it was like up, up 80 80 percent. Mm -hmm. This is all ecom. Before it was just delivery. Mm -hmm. Now this is click and collect plus delivery. So that just want to want to point that out. Uh, but yeah, so it's. Total e-com is up 93% versus year ago uh, after, you know, kind of the post-COVID. As we kind of break it down into uh, click and collect, we look at some of our grocery click and collect, um, you know, sales. We see, you know, during COVID it was up 73%, post-COVID, 152%. So still, uh, we're seeing a lot of click and collect. So I really think consumers started um, 
uh, testing out click and collect. Now they're even, it's been, you know, for the most part, some positive experience, I guess, because they're still doing it. So we're seeing, you know, growth of click and collect um, post COVID. Uh, same with, with our mass channel. We, you know, a little bit softer than, than, pre, than during COVID, still, you know, solid growth, uh, click and collect. Yeah, it's, it's just, it's like you see the same thing with uh, like parents and grandparents and, and Zoom and Skype. You yep. know, they kind of had yep. to do it because there's no other way. And then after a while, they get used to it. They like it, and they just keep doing yep. it. Keep doing Same it, thing yep. with online. Yep, yep. And then as we look kind of on uh, online sales versus in-store sales, again, online sales, as we, we kind of graph this over the, the spectrum of, of COVID through, um, you know, July 26. I, again, online obviously is, you know, outpacing in-store, but, um you know, it, it's still just a trend, uh, you know, that, um, you know, we're, we're kind of seeing a little bit of that gap change a little bit, you know, in stores, you know, coming back a little bit post COVID, but, you know, certainly, yeah, online sales continue to uh, enjoy double, triple, triple digit growth um, week over week. So. So as we, 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 again, I talked about our, our weekly pulse surveys while online, you know, we're seeing some, some strong growth. Uh, you know, we've heard from consumers that, you know, not all, it's not all been positive. You know, we're certainly seeing that 62% of consumers say that some items they wanted were not available to order online. Uh, so they, you know, kind of were left with some, you know, having to make do with some different options. 48% of stated items ordered were not delivered due to availability availability changes. So they thought they were going to get a product and it wound up not happening. 21% uh, couldn't get a delivery time that was even convenient. So so there were some challenges with, with online as well. So it, it wasn't all, um, you know, all, 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 all happiness. So, so certainly um, there are some challenges anyway, so in this time. So I can't get a kettlebell for uh, anything. <laughs> <laughs> there's a whole shortage. There's a, there's a, it's funny. There's one, um, there's one foundry, I think, in North Carolina or somewhere in that area that makes most of the weights and kettlebells. And during this whole thing, there was such a backlog of orders that they won't be able to fulfill them for months. Wow. Yeah. Well, so even, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, yeah. And even uh, kind of different is, I, you know, I, I've heard, had, had a couple friends who have tried to have pools installed, try to get a pool installed during this, I mean, back up till September. What could yeah. that well, yeah. you have a solution to that now. Airbnb is letting people rent their pools, well, which is kind of brilliant when you think about yeah. it. You know, it's like, they're, you know, and it's a socially distanced, you know, it's outside. Yeah. You generally, if it's a big pool and only a handful of people, you kind of, you know, although I think a lot of people have taken advantage and had big, big parties and right. have gotten into some trouble. But the idea was pretty good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is. All right. So now as we kind of look at... Um, kind of look at the shopper, how, how some, some of the shop, sh uh, shopper trends. So consumers, you know, re remain concerned. Again, during our survey, we found that, you know, that kind of that initial COVID time period, that week of 322, 58% of consumers were extremely concerned. As of, you know, the end of June, that only dropped to 53%. So there is still a lot of concern around COVID. Uh, as uh, Again, you know, as we look at the survey a little bit more, uh, kind of on the left here, you know, um, we see that, you know, we asked the question um, of consumers, are they concerned more about COVID than they were over the last week? Kind of in red, you can kind of see, um, you know, 59% kind of initially, it's only dropped to, to 38%. So there's still um, a lot of concern there. And then the overall response rate around, you know, is the U.S. doing enough? That's actually gone up. So, wow. um, yeah, so really... 57% of consumers don't feel the U.S. is doing enough. So uh, there's still a lot of concern there. And again, when we look at the expected length of the crisis, um, you know, at, as of, you know, our last update, 41% feel it's going to be more than 12 months, so which has gone up, I mean, quite a bit. Well, I mean, I think that, that makes sense when you see, you know, when you had the spikes in all those other states. I mean, they're only now just starting to level off, but who knows what we're going to see now that schools are opening up yeah. and you know, so there's just, I think there's just, there's too much that we don't know as consumers on what's going to happen and what can cause a spike. Nobody expected California and Florida and Texas to have the spikes that they did. And now they're 
over, you know, they have more than New York. New York's yeah, been the yeah. only one that's been kind of steady. Right. Yep. But we, we were really, really, you know, nipped it in the bud and were really strict in the beginning. So it's just, and then who knows if there's going to be a, we don't even know if there's going to be another wave. There's only the first right. wave. Right. So, and who wants to be the first person to bring that second wave home? <laughs> right. Exactly. All right. And then, you know, um, as we kind of, you know, I, again, just looked at the mindset of consumers, um, you know, really, really, when you, when you look at it, when we look at, you know, they, they want to spend less time, you know, 44% want to spend 20 minutes or less in a store. Um, you know, 49% have challenges, you know, with, with ideas, inspiration to cook. So, you know, consumers are definitely looking for different ways to kind of not only shop, just be quick about it, but also, you know, how they kind of, you know, prepare meals for their family. Because again, you're not going to be eating out nearly as much. Um, you know, uh, I know, I don't know about you, Joe. I mean, New York, I know there's been restrictions. Chicago here for me, there's been restrictions. I think we've been out once uh, in the last eight weeks. So it, it's just not, it's all dining at home. So. Now, well, we were really strict until four weeks ago when the restaurants opened for curbside, you know, for outdoor dining. And then everybody went crazy. And then they just kicked back restrictions. So now if you're, uh, you can only be seated at an outdoor restaurant. And if you have alcohol, you have to have food with it. And then other, otherwise it's takeout and, and delivery. So they kind of pushed it back. Everything closes at 11 o'clock. And uh, again, they're being preemptive so that it doesn't get out of control. Got it. Yep. Yep. Same here. Um, all right. As we look at kind of the last eight weeks, you know, this is looking at more of our consumer shopper data. You know, again, we're seeing for confections, we're, we're seeing, you know, week over week growth overall from a dollar sales standpoint. But really, you know, trips are down. You know, we can kind of see in the center here, trips are down week over week, we're seeing, you know, fewer trips, but when they're in the store, they're buying more. I mean, double digit, you know, when we look at the average basket size, which is essentially dollars per trip, that's up, uh, like I say, double digits each week over the last eight weeks. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, just fewer trips, but they're buying more when they're buying. So yep. get it, get as yeah. much as they yep. can. So they don't have to go anywhere else. Yep. Exactly. Are you seeing a lot of, um, a lot of, retailers trying to add more products to categories they typically don't carry like for example one one uh, data point i heard was that grocery stores were selling a lot more school and office supplies just because people don't want to make that second trip to a school and office supply store they're, they're going to get whatever they can in the grocery store or wherever they're at so, yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd have to look at some actual data for that, but it makes sense. I mean, I know what we're seeing is, um, you know, we're seeing assortment change. So you're seeing fewer, maybe fewer items, but, you know, it's definitely more around what consumers need. So bigger pack sizes, uh, stuff like that. I know uh, I was at Jewel um, last, this past weekend and they had toilet paper all in the front of the store. You've never seen it there before. I mean, mount, I mean, toilet paper, paper towels, all your paper products just in the front of the store, not even on the shelves, just easy access to it. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's good. You know, like back to school will definitely be, be different in how, you know, how they're merchandising it. So, mm -hmm. okay. The other, um, you know, um, as we kind of looked at some of the key attributes uh, that, that that are resonating with, with consumers, uh, one of the things we're seeing is is recycle. I mean, I think consumers now, part of it, you know, um, you know, the the Gen Z movement, millennials, you know, certainly more conscious of the environment. But we're seeing just more uh, recycling initiatives. They're looking for for packaging of products that are recyclable, um, you know, healthy. You know, only really kind of uh, focusing on some healthy aspects of products. Um, preferring foods without artificial flavors. And we're seeing that consumers are reading the label a little bit more. So, you know, there's a lot going on here. I know we've talked a lot about treating, indulgence, but also being healthy. So I think they're kind of really being selective in, in what they're treating with, what they're, you know, what some of their healthy choices are. And I, th I think consumers are definitely probably paying, it seems like at least from the surveys we're doing is they're definitely paying more attention to uh, product attributes than they may have in, in the past before COVID. Um, so again, just some, some data facts here, just 
55% of consumers say uh, food allergies are, um, or are, you know, they, they, they shop for, for, for products that, you know, make allergy claims. So here's just some examples. So some, some al allergens. So, um, you know, of things that consumers are looking for, I know within, um, Confections, certainly, you know, there are, is, you know, some of that peanut-free stuff that you know, consumers will have to you know, pay attention to. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, attributes are, are, are very important throughout the entire store as consumers are shopping. Um, again, the health, holistic well-being, um, you know, 70% of shoppers are looking for specific attributes that are important to them when choosing a brand. So they are definitely, again, just kind of driving a point home that consumers are reading the labels a little bit more and really, really being uh, – selective when, when they shop. Uh, it, I, again, we talked a little bit about, about searches. So um, between February and March, we looked at, you know, again, some of these healthy trends. So Instacart, you know, vitamin C, searches increased 74 um, X versus uh, previous time period. You know, again, you can see magnesium, vitamin D, same thing. Walmart uh, on walmart.com, searches related to immunity increased seven and a half times. Amazon, you know, six six point three percent times. So we're definitely seeing more searches for some of these healthy products, healthy yep. attributes. That's definitely that, and not, no surprise there. <laughs> and that's yeah, and, and again, this is the other thing too is you know, fifty one percent of food products fail to make a claim for an attribute that's important. So a lot of products, you know, whether it's keto or um, um, other, uh, you know, I know keto is a big one where, you know, a lot of products don't make a keto claim, but they, they they qualify as keto friendly and yeah. they won't show up on a search. Um, same with vegan. Um, you know, I know a lot of products certainly don't necessarily make a vegan claim, but they are, you know, they qualify as vegan. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, it just really underscores the importance of making sure that, you know, that, that searchability and, and that, you know, Consumers can find their products when, when they're looking for it. So, so for the same, by the same token, if uh, there's some products that have ingredients that are good for immunity, but yep. they're not putting exactly. down, you know, uh, in, in their messaging or, you know, then they're going to be missed on an online search. Yep. And it, it, kind of the example on the right, you know, the vegan, uh, second most search attribute, but only 76% um, um, so in the, but un, it's unclaimed by brands that qualify 76% of the time. Wow. So again, kind of that, kind of what I was talking about with like Vito or mm -hmm. Keto and Vegan, that, that, you know, they qualify for status, but, but they're not making the claims and, you know, consumers just, you know, it's a missed opportunity. A big one in some cases. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, just, um, you know, Earth Day, you know, we, we looked at some data from, from uh, Kearney, 48% um, of respondents said they're very, you know, they're more concerned about the environment than they were in the past. 55% uh, said that as a result of COVID, they are more likely to purchase environment, environmentally friendly products. So again, I, I know, um, yeah, I mean, if, if, if manufacturers are making any sort of, uh, you know, what, if they're doing something that has to do with the environment, they need to call that out to consumers because it looks like it's resonating. I know we talked about this at last ECRM, yeah. Joe, back in New Orleans in uh, August, and, it, you know, we're still seeing it, it. It's still resonating today even more so. Oh, this, although this Earth Day kind of was a little strange because you have, like, here in New York, they had a plastic bag ban, but once the virus happened, they held it because they did not want people using reusable bags and, right. yeah. you know, it was less healthier. Also, people, when they were getting takeout drinks, you know, they were just, you could see in the evening, they would, you know, takeout ended up being they would get a drink and drink in the street. And then you would see the garbage cans filled with plastic cups. So it's almost like the environment took a back seat for like three or four weeks during that period. Yeah. yeah. Even and like then straws now too. Straws just, you know, very, yeah. I've, I've read article. I forget who the company was, but they implemented, gave everyone like a, uh, a, a straw that was, I think it was like made, I don't know if it was steel, but it was a, a straw you, you just cleaned and it was good. You know, you never threw it away. So Yeah, yeah. I've seen uh, masks. They, uh, my friend uh, knows someone that makes masks that come with a metal straw. Oh, okay. And the masks have a hole oh, for, okay. that you can pull out a plug and then drink while you're having the mask on and then plug it up. Got it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So again, just, you know, um, 
products that touted sustainable message um, grew uh, more dollar sales versus all of 2019. So again, um, you know, we, we've got a partnership with Label Insights, so we're able to kind of really look at some different attributes than we weren't able to look at in the past. But again, you can kind of see recyclable, seven times growth, ethical, 12 times, per, per, you know, 12 times growth, recycled packaging doing very well. Um, so I, again, just, you know, um, more around just um, consumers are very, um, earth friendly. I mean, they, they do not, um, you know, they care about, you know, kind of the environment more than they have in the past. I mean, this is a trend that, you know, sustainability, you know, is, wasn't something we thought talked about as much five years ago. Now it's, mm -hmm. it's very, very important to our consumers as it should be, you know? All right. So, um, the other thing too I want to talk about is really just connecting with your consumers. So we've talked about a lot of the different trends. So certainly, you know, um, we call deepen your connection with your consumers. Uh, you know, um, demand roles uh, are, you know, there's definitely needs for different products. You need to make sure your, 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 your consumers understand what they are. Engage with your consumers. So target those consumers with messages that make sense. So certainly um, if it's, if you got a message around recyclable and you've got a recyclable consumer, you know, make sure you target them. Uh, educate and inform your consumers on, on your product. So again, you know, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about recycling, but if you're doing something that uh, is friendly for the environment, whether it's you're using all electric vehicles, you know, um, you know, throughout your process, let your consumers know that it's very important. Uh, the purchase cycle, just making sure you're, 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 um, following that purchase cycle and hitting your consumers with messages, you know, whether your purchase cycles every two months, every, you know, two weeks, make sure you're kind of hitting your, your consumers, you know, giving them messages along that purchase cycle. Uh, experiential, again, consumers are always going to try new things. They, they want to, you know, have that experience, um, that, that different experience, whether it's a new form of uh, gummy, a uh, new sour flavor, you know, they're going to, you know, they're going to try it. So make sure they're aware and just new product alerts. So certainly as you're introducing new products, always alert your consumers. So it's really about engaging more with your consumers. So I think this is so important. I mean, all of these things on this slide, <clears throat> especially like you mentioned, a lot of people are eating at home and a lot of people are not used to cooking at home. So they're looking for recipes, for instructions, for unique things to do. Their kids are at home. They're looking for cool things to do with their kids. And there's so many opportunities for brands to kind of educate them on things that they could be doing at home, of course, with their products. But, you know, you, if they, more and more of them do that, they'll get a lot of loyalty with, you know, once we're all out of this. That'll continue yep. on. Yep, I agree. All right. And yeah, just, you know, I, again, kind of, I, I think this goes without saying, you know, mass print, you know, um, certainly there was a place for it, but now it's really all about a personalized message. You can hit your consumers on their phones. I mean, make sure that they understand, you know, and, and just really make sure you're, 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 you're targeting the, the correct consumer. So you want to make sure that you're really, you know, who you're, understand who your audience is and that you're marketing towards them. So uh, that's that's going to be key to really uh, driving a return on your on your um, investment. So, so just kind of summarize things a little bit here. So, just some different ideas. So, certainly, you know, health and wellness is key. Uh, so, certainly, um, make sure you, you pay attention to that. If you've got any kind of um, any, you know, if you're again, we talked a little bit, Joe, about. Um, you know, keto and vegan and how, you know, products really kind of are keto and vegan, but they're not, not making those claims. Make sure that, you know, you get that message out and make sure consumers understand that, um, you know, kind of what, what your product can do. Um, consumers um, are shopping a number of ch uh, retailers, you know, like we talked about, you know, um, more, uh, you know, paying attention to every dollar they're spending. So they're looking for deals. They're going to shop more, more channels. So you need to make sure your, um, your strat, you know, your channel strategy, uh, takes that into account. Um, sustainability again is very big right now. So again, anything you're doing sustainability, no matter what it is, make sure your consumers understand you're doing that, what you're doing, cause it, it, it it's going to hurt. It's going to help. Um, and then we talk about you know, this kind of that digital engagement with, with, with consumers. Again, make sure that you're, you're targeting them correctly. Uh, if you've got, you know, again, being able to target your consumers uh, is just a key to really, again, driving, you know, those, those marketing dollars, making sure you're hitting the right consumers, making sure you're spending your money correctly. And really just um, 
uh, at the end of the day, you know, you know, the, the consumers are, um, you know, they're more digitally, mobile savvy than they were in the past. You know, you talked about your, your parents with Zoom. Same thing. I've never received a text from my parents, and now I do. So yeah. it's 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 crazy. Um, final final point. Just you know, I, again with re reduced trips, we saw that consumers are taking fewer trips. Uh, they're spending more per trip. So certainly, they're going to look for value through larger sizes. So certainly, don't don't uh, ignore that. Make sure you've got more of those multi pack sizes. Uh, but also, don't forget. You know, you got to kind of balance that. You know, you're going to have smaller smaller households. So you got to make sure you still have that kind of smaller offering as well. Um, but yeah, so so that's kind of uh, in a nutshell. Joe, what, what we talked about and um, any, any other parting comments or any, anything else? Yeah, I actually have one. I'm going to ask you to bring out, break out your crystal ball and uh, kind of get your thoughts on once this passes, right? We have a vaccine. It's all done and then behind us. What do you think is going to stay the same and what do you think is going to kind of, I mean, what do you think is going to remain changed? And what do you think is going to revert back to the old pre pre COVID ways? But I think what will revert back is you know like we talked about some of those um, larger pack sizes. I, I I think that's something that probably once when COVID's over and we you know you, you might see some, you know um, so more consumers are going to be out. Um, um, you know, schools maybe you know hopefully cons you know kids are going to school. So you might. Oh yeah, we're talking. This is all done. Every everything's yeah. back to normal. So yeah, so, so yeah. yeah, so I I think some of that you know some of the pack sizes you know that that, that might be a trend that you know maybe ex eventually kind of goes away. Mm -hmm. uh, and some of the things that will um, stay the same. Um, you know, uh, again, I I think a lot of the sustainability. I I think you know Gen Z is becoming um, their buying power is increasing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, certainly with, with it within the market. And I think they're going to have a, you know, they're, I mean, my daughters are all Gen Z and they're all about the environment. They have been mm -hmm. for a couple of years now. And um, I don't see that changing at all. I, I, I mean, I think it's, it, it's kind of uh, um, bleeding out to other consumers as well, just based on some of the survey data, we're seeing just a bigger trend around sustainability. So I, I think that's another trend that's really um, gonna, uh, gonna stick to. Excellent. What about uh, e-commerce? Uh, you know, click and collect, and you that's know, not going to go. Yeah, I, I think that's going to continue to. Uh, you know, we're going to see that kind of um, drive forward. I don't see that um, changing. Uh, you know, uh, will it level off? I, I mean, maybe maybe it will, but I, I think that share has gone up. We just saw three points. Um, I don't. You know, I don't see that slowing down anytime soon. Again, we're still seeing eighty percent growth mm -hmm. post COVID. Compared to you know what we you know eighty five percent during COVID, so I, I again I don't that's not a big slowdown at all, Joe. I mean that's yeah. you know five points is not especially when you're talking eighty percent growth. I mean it, it's uh, and, and again you know consumer you know um, retailers are they're seeing more click and collect. They're making things easier now. I, the Jewel by Me they've got a whole uh, it used to be a parking section that was just you know you could park there normally. Now it's all for click and collect. Um, delivery. So it, it's, you know, cons you know, retailers are changing as well. So yeah, I, I don't see e-com really slowing down at all. Um, so excellent. Well, again, thank you so much for this. And just for everybody who's watching, uh, the first people who are going to see this are those who are participating in our candy planning every day in summer seasonal. And that's going to be in video format. But then following that, we're going to, you know, open this up put it on our blog, put it on our podcast, and share it broadly. So you'll be able to get these slides as well as uh, additional information uh, once we open it up to everybody. So, Dan, thank you so much for everything. And, uh, well, I will catch up with you virtually during the session. Thanks, Joe. All right. Take care. All right. Bye.